All right, so I'm making this video because I needed a very, very watered down version of transfer maps and the workflow therein. Here I have a cube that I just turned into a two by four. So think two by four for a second. And in this two by four, we're going to put maybe, oh, let's say some kind of bracket or something like that. So I'm just gonna take a second here and insert some edge loops. Take this bottom one, extrude it. Take this top one, extrude it. And then I'm just gonna see what that looks like on three on the keyboard. Okay, it's interesting. Uh, what I wanna do is slender this down just a little bit. Good. And just kind of play around with the whole idea of squashing this up. Okay, edit mesh, insert edge loop. Again, I'm just hitting three here to see what kind of effect that really has on it. Well, that looks interesting. Okay, so what we're gonna do is use this smaller. And a lot smaller. So effectively, I made some kind of like bracket, nail, something. When you look at it from a distance, you're obviously saying, well, it looks like that bar that went on the swing set and we would sit here and there would be chains went up. Uh, what I want to do now is kind of round off this 2 by 4 a little bit so nobody gets splinters. So I'm thinking practical here as far as when I'm building, I'm building with the idea as this is kind of real life. I have a 2 by 4 it has to have rounded edges, etc. and so forth. So that's what's kind of going in my head right now. Okay, so there we go. Uh, let's mesh smooth that. And now I have rounded outside edges. I always like inserting a couple edge loops here to make it more unified. I'm not really concerned about polygon count or anything like that. All right, I think that would prove it right there. So here's a very small watered down example. I have all these meshes and this one two by four alone is 2,184 faces. So that's quite a lot. Uh, what I wanna do is make a model that's very simple. So what I'm gonna do is grab a, a cube, get it to about the same size as the two by four with the nails. I'll hit four on the keyboard and jump into my top view and just slender this down. Jump into my other views and get it to about the same size. Gonna make it a little bit taller, and I'm gonna go halfway between the mesh here. So the the idea here is to get it a little outside of the original design. So once in a while, I'll just zoom in, and there we go. All right, so there we go. So we have in the center here our high res mesh. Let's combine all those pieces together. That's gonna be my high res per se. 
there we go, one gigantic mesh. And what I want to do is transfer all that detail, which isn't very much, but enough to get the point across, over to the other 2x4. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is show you how to do that. All right, now what I'm going to do is take these meshes, and incidentally, I'm going to show you a trap new students always fall into. Like, these rivets look amazing, right? But they're not really, if I hit one, they're square. Okay, well, that's going to transfer over into the normal map if I'm not careful. So, to counteract that, I want to, I want to show you what that is so that new students finally realize that, you know, that three on the keyboard is a dangerous thing. What I'm going to do is mesh separate and take and smooth out this end. I'll smooth them and I'll smooth them one more time. And on the other side, I'm going to leave them alone. I'm just going to hit three on the keyboard. There we go. And then I'm going to combine the whole hot mess together. Just like that. And then I'm going to take and put this board right over the top of it. Just like that. Now I'm going to develop some UVs for the simple mesh. This one needs UVs. To do that, I'm going to jump into the top view. Create UVs. Planar map it. Planar mapping over here in the UV texture editor window, which is window UV texture editor, gives you this. I'm going to make this one to one, so I'm just going to shrink that down. All right. Well, I need to unfold this. Right now, it's effectively one huge illegal UV. And I know that it's illegal because if I go over to here to this button, it's purple. Okay. Everything should be blue if it's correct. All right. Let's grab edges. We're going to grab these edges, this edge, and then I'm going to go over to the other side and grab the exact same edges. This one, this one, this one. And then I'm going to hit cut. So by cutting that, I should now be able to grab UVs on this side and hit unfold. Okay. And I should be able to jump onto the top view or top of it. Notice I'm only grabbing a few UVs at a time. Don't try to unwrap it all at the same time. It will fail quite miserably. Just like that. That's how I do it. And then I'm going to center this. This is a very small example. Oh, I just have this very simple shape. UVs are very easy to do on something like this. Until you get something down pat, always keep it down to the lowest common denominator. I mean, really, it did come down into math. It did rub off. Uh, always keep your experiments very simple until you get the workflow down pat and then try something more complex. All right, so here's what I got. Not bad. What I'm going to do now is transfer the maps. So in the next little video, um, let's look at transferring maps. This was the making UVs video. All right, to open transfer maps, we go into rendering and we go into transfer maps. Now, if this is not here, sometimes students will ask where it is and I'll say, we got to go to the plugin manager and turn on Maya at Tamor. It's like the number one question ever asked in a texture rendering and lighting course ever. And yeah, please remember it. So here, transfer maps. Now, in order to transfer maps, we need a few things. One, we need a project folder. So set project. We're going to set this to transfer maps example. This is a folder on my desktop. I'm going to save my scene there also. Okay. Next, we need to specify the maps. I'm just going to remove all maps and start out with something like the normal map. All maps are the same thing, but here's how you set them up. Normal map. Notice it does not choose my folder that I set for my project, so I have to do that manually. I'm going to put it in that same folder. I'll call this normal period TGA, and I'm going to choose TGA below. Very important. You can see I already have one. 
I'm going to set this to two on my envelope. I'm going to process envelopes and see what that looks like. It's six on the keyboard and see what my envelopes are. Here is my envelopes. Now an envelope is just searching generally within the area of this pink jello. So what I'm going to do is take this pink jello and make it a little bit bigger. I notice it produces sometimes better results if it's bigger than the actual mesh itself. This is not the mesh, it's the jello or envelope. All right, next I go down here to common output and make sure this is at 512, 512. Uh, high quality sampling and same with the mental ray common very important next step highlight all meshes and go edit delete by type history and then modify freeze transformation freeze transformation and I'm, I'm doing this separately for each mesh so there we go very important. All right, now we have a thing called the target and the source. So the target is this jello. We'll add that one. I'll hit four on the keyboard to get to the inside of the jello and choose this one as my source mesh. So there we go. Incidentally, you should probably name these something uh, rather than cube shape seven doesn't really matter but yeah it does matter okay six on the keyboard back over here to go into this mode high quality rendering I like to have that on and let's go to bake should only take a couple seconds because it's only on 512 by 512 Okay, so what I'm going to do here is, here's what I like to do. Go over here and move this. Okay, just move it a little bit and undo it. Copy this number, control C, move it, look at it. Does it look good? Yeah, it looks good, it looks amazing. Look at that. So you have the detail of the screws or bolts or whatever you're going to call these things uh, being transferred over to this geometry. So therefore I never had to have this at 5,000 faces. I have it at 6 faces. And that is called transferring maps. That's how you do it. After this it was a big huge eye-opener for me. Um, everything that I had learned about modeling, you know, incidentally back when, uh, had kind of gone out the window because you know, all those people that will say, well, it has to be one giant mesh, it has to be all interconnected. And, you know, you get all these instructors that just have these own set of rules and et cetera and so forth. So I'm adding some of my own rules here. Uh, and I will say that during the production phase of things, you do have to be wary of a few things as far as um, gaps and um, weird things like if there was two of these, like this, and this one was longer, like this. Incidentally, I should update my UVs if this was the case. But still, uh, for this example, I would have to edit delete by type history. I could do that across all meshes or just one at a time. I like to play it safe. I'll freeze transformation, all this. Okay, and transfer the maps. See what happens. Oh, these two meshes have to be combined. Duh. Delete by tip history, modify freeze transformation. And then in here, I have to just choose my source mesh. I can remove or clear all, then add. There we go. Now the difference here <laughs> is 
it's going to look a little wonky because there is a big huge gap here in the center of one of these. Again, always take this, we'll move it out of the way, and you can see, oh yeah, definitely some wonkiness going on. So the rule kind of states that if you have a gap like this, you have to fill it with something. That's the thing that I found out. And it's only in certain cases that you have this problem. But I like to use the cube filler. <laughs> and I treat it much like grout. So there we go. Now, technically, there's a gap there, but it has a piece of geometry, so it doesn't sink all the way through. Again, since my UVs are all wonky, um, here, I would have to update my UVs and unfold these. So the wonkiness would go away. Then I would have to make sure these are on the 0 to 1. Just like that. Also like to soften my edge. So these are all things that I've learned over time. I'm just sharing with you some of my hardships and pains and frustrations. I'm going to center pivot on this. Again, I, I want to make sure that this is over the top of it perfectly and be the same size. So that was my issue too. It was just a little bit too big. Okay, just a little bit bigger than that, not much. A little bit bigger than this, not much. No technical specifications on how big or not big because it's all within the envelope. The power of the envelope is what's really driving this thing. So with that filler in place, it should be good to go. But hopefully something else happens so I can show you some of the other things that might go wrong. Edit, delete by type history, modify freeze transformation, and here we go, bake. And there we go. Because that filler's in place, um, I have this instead. And I can move this off to the side. And now I have effectively transferred the detail of two objects or three objects combined into one object. This one was 10,000 faces or 20,000 triangles. And this one is still six. Golf clap for me. Enjoy the video. Have a good one.